hello everyone so this video is in continuation with multi storied building so in the different parts uh, videos i have uploaded in this place list so we have till now uh, we have calculated the load then we have uh, analyzed the structure we have calculated in the analysis uh, what are the forces coming in the beam and the column and also in the slab then after analysis of like the forces the bending moment and shear force diagram we have drawn then from that moments we have calculated the flexural flexural reinforcement for the beam in the previous video and in this video i am going to calculate the transverse reinforcement that means the shear requirement for the beam we will be calculating so we have analyzed this multi storied building right and we were considering this beam for the analysis so in the previous video we have calculated the uh, flexural reinforcement required in this beam d as per is 13920 now this in this video i am going to calculate the shear requirement or the transverse steel or reinforcement required for this beam de so we have taken the span as 5 meter and the beam size we have considered 400 cross 600 and as per the uh, analysis a uh, design we have found that we need four numbers of 16 dia steel at top and three numbers of 16 dia steel at bottom this reinforcement we have provided right now so i am going to calculate how much steel we have provided at top the area of steel we have provided four numbers of 16 dia bars so total area of steel provided is 804.25 mm square so if i am going to calculate the percentage of steel that means 800.4.25 by b into d so we have 400 into our depth we have taken 532 mm so you can refer previous video how much cover and how we have calculated this depth into 532 so this into 100 percentage of steel will come so we are providing 0.38 percentage of steel at top at bottom similarly the area of steel at bottom we are providing three numbers of 16 dia bar so area of steel is pi by 4 d square where diameter of the bar is 16 and three numbers of bars so total area is if we calculate it is coming 603.8 mm square similarly the percentage of steel if you calculate we are providing 0.28 percentage okay so we are going to resign for shear so at support we have considered uh, the right and left and at same right same reinforcement if it is different then you have to calculate at different position okay at right end how much shear is coming for that you have to provide the stir ups at left end also so you may have to provide differently as per the if it is different moments are coming at the both a different steel is coming at both the points okay for in our case as it is same so i'm going to calculate at one end so at left or at you can say right end because at ends we are provided same reinforcement so 
so tensile steel at support i can write we have provided 0.38 percent because if it is at support that means this is at support means the tensile will come at top and bottom will be the compression reinforcement so tensile is 0.38 percent because if you see our this is our tension zone here then at center tension zone is here then again right end tension zone is at top so our area of steel will be this is tension zones so these are area of steel and your compression zone will be this okay so for this percent of of steel provided the permissible design shear stress of concrete tau c is equal to this you can refer is 456 table 19 in which for uh, different percentage of steel and for different concrete grade for us we have considered m25 so for fck25 you have to calculate the tau c so they have provided uh, this for us it is 0 0.38 so in the table if you refer they have given for 0 0.25 value and 0 0.5 value so you have to interpolate between this to get for 0 0.38 value so after interpolating from the values i'll get 0 0.4276 newton per mm square or mpa okay so what is our this is shear stress so design shear strength that means so this is stress into area b into v so 0 0.4276 our b is 400 into depth is 532 so we are getting so the value will come in newton i will divide by 1000 to get into kilonewton so 90.993 kilonewton is our shear force so let me put as this view we use okay So I'll just put uh, S so that we can say the strength of this beam. Okay, see a strength of the beam. Next, so this we have calculated uh, left and right ends at center. So our tensile reinforcement we have provided 0.28%. So for this, you have to calculate same referring this IS456 what is the tau c so tau c if you refer the same table 19 you have to provide refer 456 for m25 so you will get 0 0.3756 newton per mm square so your shear strength will be at center your design shear strength is equal to 0 0.3756 into 400 into 532 by 1000 so you will get 79.927 kilonewton okay so this is also vus but this is at center and this is at uh, supports so if you have different uh, at le left and right then you have to calculate differently at right end and left end what is the strength or the shear capacity shear strength of this concrete next if you refer the is13920 so this is i have taken the screenshot so we are now calculating the transverse re reinforcement so in the first clause it has given only vertical links shall be used in the beams 
okay uh, and no inclined links so only vertical links so these are the links that we are that it is saying the stirrups that we say in normal practice a link is made of single bent up bar but it may be may be made of two bars also namely u link with a 135 degree hook so this is our you can see so the stirrup will be bent this angle okay this angle is 135 degree it has to be bent the hook has to be provided at 135 degree and this dimension the bent of bar should be 6 into diameter of the bar so it should be 6 times of diameter not less than 65 mm at each end embedded in the core of concrete and a cross tie so if so if it is a complete uh, hoop then you, uh, you have to provide like this if you have a stirrup u stirrup then with u stirrup you have to also provide a cross tie again this cross tie this dimension also has to be 6d okay this all bent has to be done for 135 degree and 60 so this they have said you have to provide the uh, either hooks of links or cross tie shall be encased around peripheral longitudinal bars So next is your minimum diameter of link shall be 8 mm. So the stirrups that we are providing, we have to provide 8 mm. So when we'll be calculating, I will again come to this point. Then the shear force capacity. So this we are going to calculate. So this is the, we have calculated the shear strength. Now what is the uh, capacity of a beam? So first, the shear force capacity of beam shall be more than factor shear force as per linear structure analysis and as per this factor gravity shear force plus equilibrium shear force when plastic hinges are formed so we are going to uh, first uh, we'll calculate for this uh, six clause 6.3.3 b so for sway to right and for sway to left so these are the two diagrams or figures you can see we have to calculate the factored gravity shear force so this is factored the first terms are the factored gravity shear force and this uh, gravity shear force if you see this is the uh, beam the factored is 1.2 factor so if you see due to vertical loads acting on this uh, span the parcel safety factor you have to take 1.2 so this factored Factored gravity shear force is 1.2 dead load plus live load and with that you have to also add plus equilibrium shear force when plastic hinges are formed at both ends of the beam plus this uh, second term okay this second term you have to add so we'll go one by one So we are going to refer clause 6.3.3b. Okay. Then we'll come to A and we will calculate the shear force capacity. So this here we are going to calculate shear force due to plastic hinge formation at ends of B. So why this is uh, this clause is that this is to ensure that the brittle shear failure does not precede the actual yielding of the beam in flexure. That means, uh, repeating it, the shear failure, uh, the shear failure should not come first or should not happen first or should not happen before the uh, flexure fla failure of the beam. Okay, so this clause is there. So I am going to calculate V U at point so this VUA they have mentioned A means uh, at node A at B means at node B that means at left end and at the right end of the beam okay so for us because our beam is DE so I'll put VU at D okay 
so v u at d due to dead load plus live load that is gravity force plus and minus there are two so plus or minus okay otherwise i'll put i'm um, uh, i'm going to put so if you see first for the sway at sway to right v u a at d point it is minus minus 1.4 m u at point d due to s miss sagging okay plus m u at e due to hogging moment by l a b so we'll be calculating everything and if we are considering at e point okay because our d and e the values the moments are same so i can put this also as plus because for e point it will be plus and then this again the term okay same term you can see this same terms will be consider both it is minus and plus but and you have to calculate the shear force due to dead load and live load now so i'm going to calculate the gravity shear force so this is factor gravity shear force okay so this is gravity shear force this is due to so if this is the beam de and this is the udl 1.2 dead load plus live load so if you refer the previous video we have already calculated the load coming to this beam so the dead load plus live load the load covers 14.44 kilonewton per meter so in the first part you will find out how we have calculated the load so now your factor is 1.2 into 14.44 this is the total load into l is the span length wl by 2 okay w is your udl into length is your span 5 meter by 2 which comes 43.32 so why wl by 2 because we are considering the support as simply supported simply supported we are considering the beam which is mentioned here that uh, due to vertical loads acting on span the partial uh, safety factor is 1.2 and this is most important and the beam shall be considered to be simply supported for this estimation so we are considering as simply supported and we have calculated this shear force okay now now next we are going to calculate the terms this mu okay so mu ds is the sagging moment capacity at point d and mu if so here it is eh So I'll put E H. Okay. That means sagging moment capacity at E. So if uh, it is for sway in the other term sway to uh, left, then we have the hogging moment at D and the sagging moment at e so since we are having uh, same values we'll get same so at d 
and which is also equal to at e in our case okay so in our case but it's not always same if your right hand movements are different it uh, different steel you have provided then it will come different okay so if this is the beam okay sagging means it is there is like this the sagging is there that means the tensile is at bottom and we are considering sagging as positive right positive we consider so tensile at bottom means at bottom what is the steel we have provided 0.28 percent right we have provided 0.28 percent which has come as 603.18 mm square so for this steel we are going to calculate what is our moment capacity okay so if i will calculate the limiting moment means what is the capacity of the beam 0.138 fck bd square so we are considering m25 b is 400 into 532 square so the moment is coming 390.57 kilonewton meter okay for this so i'm going to calculate what is our limiting area of steel okay this i'm going to check whether this has to be like singly reinforced or doubly reinforced okay whether it needs compression reinforcement also so now coming to the limiting area of steel means so this is our moment into 10 to the 6 is newton mm by 0 0.87 fy because fe 415 we are using into d which is 532 minus 0 0.42 xu what is xu for uh, limiting xu limit is 0 0.48 d right so 0 0.48 into d so the area of steel limit is 2546 mm square so maximum this much steel we can provide okay if it is a singly reinforced right and what is uh, the area of steel we have provided so this is greater than the area of steel provided because our steel is 603.18 okay so this is like singly reinforced so i'm going to use singly reinforced formula for calculating the moment capacity so 0 0.87 into fy into area of steel into d minus 0.42 xu so 0 0.42 xu is 0 0.87 into fy into area of steel okay by 0 0.36 fck into b so our moment has come 110.3 kilonewton meter this is our moment for the sagging coming to the hogging part so this that means the beam is like this it is bending hogging part which we are considering as negative so that means the tensile portion is at top right so here top how much steel we have provided 0.38 percent so this all we are considering at ends okay at end point we are considering at end d and e okay the shear force that we are considering is we do at point at ends so uh, at end 0.38 percent so here which is equal to we have provided 804.25 mm square so again this uh, steel is less than the limiting cell so here also same we are using we'll use uh, singly reinforced formula so if it is it has come doubly reinforced you can refer 
the flexural reinforcement formula or the video that I have uploaded for W reinforce there I have used how to calculate the moment capacity you can refer that video so uh, at that point you have to calculate the com the st uh, moment uh, that means due to singly reinforced that means the moment due to mu limb due to area of steel limit plus you have to add the extra steel that you are providing for the compression that is fsc asc into d minus d dash that moment also you have to add with this mu limb if it is w reinforced okay so coming to this 0 0.87 into 415 into the area is steel is 804.25 into into d minus 4 to xu so xu is 0 0.87415 into 804.25 by 0 0.36 fck into b so in this case our moment 144.64 kN meter okay next we are going to calculate the shear here the VUD we are going to calculate is the gravity uh, shear which we have calculated okay 43.32 so I'm going to put plus and minus because for sway in left and sway in right at different points now at D or E because it will be coming same so I'm going to calculate for both the cases so the moment capacity we have considered here this is the formula that we are referring okay so 1.4 into hundred ten point three plus hundred forty four point six four so this and this okay moment at sagging and at hogging by the length or the span length so clear span is five meter this we are considering so you will get hundred fourteen point seven kilonewton and minus twenty eight point zero six kilonewton that means the other and at E you will get this at D you will get this okay so we'll consider for the larger value 114.7 so this is the shear force uh, when plastic hazing is formed Now, referring to the clause 6.3.3, so if you refer here, the shear force capacity of beam shall be more than A and B, that is factor shear force as per linear structure analysis. So, your shear force capacity. larger of so your first case is as per structural analysis so if you remember or if you refer the previous video we have calculated the shear force diagram for the beam DE so it was due to so we have um, used substitute frame method to calculate due to vertical load dead load and live load so for this our value had come 33.82 okay
and due to earthquake load we have considered we have calculated so this was 31.716 okay these are all in kilonewton value now so as per structural analysis we have to if i am considering at point d so 33.82 plus 31.716 because uh, this is negative there can be like earthquake we have known that the force can be dead load plus live load plus minus of earthquake load right this can be the case so 33.82 i'll add so for the load completion which is will be more critical 31.716 so the value is 65.5 kilonewton and the second case is due to plastic hinge so plastic hinge formation our v we have now calculated 114.7 so larger of this means we are going to consider this value okay so now we are going to provide transverse reinforcement for v u i'll put a v u s minus v u the capacity okay so what is v u s so we are going to design for 114.7 so this is a force that is coming due to the load and what is the capacity of the beam how much it can take already so we have calculated from the percent of steel at the starting so the capacity at the uh, support you can see if i'm considering at the support it is 90.993 if i'm going to consider center it is 79.927 so we are going to consider this two capacity so at the end it is 90.993 which is equal to 23.707 so this extra shear force that is coming because we already have capacity that it can bear 90.993 shear it can take but our due to external it is coming 114.7 so the difference for this we have to design so this is at supports okay then at end we'll have 114.7 minus the capacity at center is 79.927 so which is 34.773 so this is at center we have to provide stirrups for this force now so using i um, let me use two legged 8 mm dia straight up okay or link we say so i have uh, shown you that in as per our is 13920 we can minimum we have to use 8 mm link okay so this is the clause i was speaking about the minimum diameter of a link shall be 8 mm so two legged 8 mm in books you might have found that we were using in rcs is 6 mm also right uh, that is a but you can also here you have to minimum use 8 mm dia stirrup so if i am providing 8 mm dia so the spacing sv will be so for at supports let me calculate how much stirrup we need at supports so 0.87 fy so we will use fe 250 okay 250 into 2 into 2 legged so 2 into pi by 4 d square so 8 mm dia so 2 legged into the di f 532 so the formula is 0.87 fy asp d by 
VU, the shear. Okay, so this by the shear force f at support is 23707. So this is point into 1000 to convert into Newton. So this is coming 490 mm. That means we have to provide a uh, two-legged 8 mm dia bar at the rate of 490 mm spacing. Then at center, our SV is same 0 0.87 into 250, 2 into pi by 4 into 8 square into diameter by the forces. So 34773. That means point into 1000. So here we are getting 334 mm. Now, if you refer clause 6.3.5, so this is the close. This is for the links that they have shown. We have to provide over a length of 2D at either end. For example, if this is the beam, so this is our D end and this is our E end. So we have to provide 2D length. So 2D means your D is your 532 mm. So up to 2D means 2 into 532 mm which is 1064 mm till this distance from this end okay this 2d distance we have to provide the stirrups for because whatever you are calculating at supports we have to provide till 2d distance okay this end and also from here you have to provide 2d distance okay so this you have to provide d shall not exit d by 4 or 8d and minimum it should not it should not be less than 100 mm so calculating the spacing that means as per clause 6.3.5 your sv at supports should not be less than d by 4 so our 532 by 4 which is 133 mm should not be less than 8 dia so 8 into we are using we have used uh, the uh, steel reinforcement 16 dia bar so 8 into 16 is 128 mm or it should, it should be an minimum it should be greater than 100 mm okay so I am going to provide for us it has come 490 mm we are going to provide minimum this means let me provide 128 because it is lesser value 128 so I'll round it off to 125 mm so we are going to provide use two legged 8 mm dia bar at the rate of 120 mm 5 mm center to center okay from and okay from and till how much 1064 mm okay similarly for at center they have given a clause okay now this is another clauses the first link shall be not be exceeding 50 mm if you see the first link here they have provided from the end it should be 50 mm okay should not be less than should not exceed 50 mm. That minimum you have to provide 50 mm. You have to start the providing the link. Then the last clause is the closely spaced link shall be provided over a length equal to 2D on either side of a section where fluctuating may occur under earthquake effects. So this is what they have written here 2D at either end we have to provide. Next over the remaining length that means at center we have to provide this and the spacing should not exceed D by 2. That means D by 2 is 532 by Two. So D by 2 is 532 by 2 which is 266 mm. So it should not be greater than 266 mm. So at center we are going to provide use two legged 8 mm dia straight up at the rate of 265 mm. Okay center to center. So this is our transverse reinforcement. So if I draw roughly the beam, 
okay this is our beam de span of 5 meter and if this is our column at this end at this end okay this is the column going now so we have already uh, calculated the flexural reinforcement in the last video which we have provided the top and bottom reinforcement okay so and in this uh, part we have designed the stirrups how much it is required so from here to 2D which is our 1064 uh, so let me start with here 50 mm if I'm providing I'm starting here so for 10264 means I'm going to provide at center 125 mm so so if I divide 1064 by 125 roughly it is come 9 so let me provide 10 1 2 3 4 5 because up to 2d distance we have to provide so this I am providing so 2 legged 8 mm bar 8 mm bar at the rate of 125 center to center okay so so this exactly if you divide it won't come so you will almost get like 1.3 meter when you provide the link at the rate of 125 m center to center similarly here also same you have to provide both the ends because at right end also you have to calculate so you'll now at the center from here you are going to provide at rate of 265 mm so so double spacing it will be because that is 125 it's almost more than the double of 125 so like this you have to provide at the center the stirrups now if I look at this section okay at this end and at center the section if I draw so at this AA section so this is our beam and we had provided four dia at top and three dia bar 16 dia bar at bottom and this is the so your hoop or the stirrup okay and this should be 60 that means 6 into 8 48 mm 135 degree bend so this we have calculated to let 8 dia at the 125 center similarly at center if you find if you remember the flexural reinforcement at top at the center we didn't need but uh, minimum 12 dia to minimum reinforcement you have to provide so we have provided uh, instead of 3 minimum it is required 316 but we have provided because at the end we have just continued this bar so cutting one bar then again joining here it will be difficult right so for side consideration I have continued the all the four bars throughout the beam so here 3 and here same dia we are providing for both the ends and the center so here what stirrups is two legged eight dia at the rate of 265 mm center to center okay so the stirrups uh, here are less spaced and center is more spaced 
So this is what we have calculated the transverse reinforcement as per IS13920. In the next video, we will be learning how to design column and how to detail it as per IS13920. So thank you for watching. Hope this is useful.